just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring ting a tingling too. Come on, it's lovely when they ride together with you. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. You know, one of the big raves, is that a good word, raves? One of the, one of the big deals uh, every, every year around this time is the newest, best TV screen, the newest, brightest picture. And, and uh, well, I think you know where I'm going with that. But the truth is, the best picture is in your mind's eye in your head it's, it's always been the way it is ever since the beginning of radio when uh, radio was considered the theater of the mind um, it, it is, and, and I, I don't speak to only a few people I speak to everybody when I say that so if you're thinking to yourself no that's not the way I am for me I have to have a TV I have to have a picture in front of me well then maybe you've never really heard a well produced audio play or a well produced audio book we have had Bill Hyde on with us before he is one of those guys who knows how to make audio come alive in your mind's eye in other words, he knows how to direct uh, theater of the mind. Bill Hyde is a producer. He's the founder of Heirloom Audio, and the products that he produces are so outstanding that uh, if I ever would recommend any any place to go for some really great audio uh, storytelling, that's where I would send you to go. Um, and I have one here. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm being distracted by he my own. He's absolutely product. amazing. The Dragon and the Raven: The Extraordinary Adventures of G. A. Henty. So let's say good morning to Bill Hyde. He's got a, a, a cast of stars actually on this one, but it's the story, it's the production, and it's the research as well in, into all of these things that really. I mean, it all comes together, and I don't know how he does them. I, it just it just seems like it would be a hard thing to do. And I work with with audio all the time. Bill Hyde. Good morning, Bill. How you doing? Well, good morning, guys. I'm great. Thanks so much for your kind words as well. Oh, where are you? Where are you calling from? Well, you know, you you were playing that song about uh, lovely w weather for a, a sleigh ride together with you. I'm, I'm uh, up in northern Illinois where uh, it's not snowing today, but it does snow a lot this time of year. And um, when I heard that song, and, 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 and I know where you guys are, it kind of made me smile. <laughs> it made me smile. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, it's, it's wishful thinking for us. It, it'll probably yeah. never happen, but yeah. yeah. Plus, yeah. plus, no, it's all good. Plus, it was Brian Setzer, so I eh, got to have the, sh <laughs> the stray cats in there a little bit. I like Brian Setzer. Uh, well, okay, well, so let's start there. I mean, music is, is something that we all are familiar with audio production, and, and I'm, I'm amazed how many people don't even realize that there are some audio books that are, and this, this is not just a book, though. This is an audio, what do you call it, audio play, would you call it? Yeah, we call it an audio adventure because we we like to think that we we you have this synergistic effect of using all of the different uh, things that you've described. We try to put together a great script. We try to get great actors. We try to have a fast moving story. We use try to use great foley, and um, we also try to use great uh, music. And we have original um, um, scores written for each of our our deals. And so that that's just a bit of a formula that we have that kind of makes it into something that we call an audio adventure. Wow! Uh, for those who don't know what foley is, that's sound effects. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Sorry for the no sorry for the nomenclature, guys. I mean, yeah, you're radio people. You get that. Uh, um, so this is two and a half hours. Is this a true story? It is a true story. It is a true story. It's truth told through fiction. And so, what G. A. Henty, this Victorian uh, uh, author, does, and what we do with his stuff, he he wrote these stories back in the 1800s, and I always love them because they were written before post modernity and before you know bad guys became good guys and so your good guys are still your good guys and your bad guys are bad guys i love what you just well, said before bad guys became good guys <laughs> yeah 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 well here's here's be, be, you know we're looking at and i sort of become less than politically correct when i say you know that the stories have a christian presupposition and so many times bad guys become good guys in life and in these stories so that's part of the theme as well and so a lot of the vikings in this story actually kind of had as, as ruthless and tough as they were this is a story about king alfred and during the ninth century a lot of those bad guys became really really good guys so i have to be careful how i say that but you know what stories are like today you never really know what's you know who who is who and it's, i think it's okay for for your hero to have flaws most heroes have flaws yeah right, but right. when when you at the end of something you don't know up from down right from wrong i, I think 
I'm trying to turn back the clock a little bit and uh, give people just a good old-fashioned story. In, in this case, the story is true. It's amazing history about a man that very few people know about. And they call him King Alfred the Great for a reason. There's only a couple English kings that get that that um, denotation of the great. And Alfred certainly deserves it because he was someone that could do anything in terms of he could lead he could he was an academic he was a military leader he was an ambassador he was just uh, a translator of, of things in life really, I mean, really. he was he was uh, you, you you could talk all day about this guy and and not be done and what's fun and cool is he had his you know bad moments in his life he had his moments where he gave up and he dissipated his life even though he was the son of a king so there's something in this story for everybody, and it's just uh, we should all know about King Alfred, especially today. And uh, this is really an amazing way to embrace history because sometimes when people are growing up and they're in school, they do the uh, lesson in the textbook and they don't really get excited about it. But listening to your audio theater, you get excited about it, and then you want you you crave more. You you want to learn more. Yeah, I think that is one of the things, you know, most for most the way that, that history was taught, it's just sort of dates and dead guys, as we say. But we try to bring history to life because history is so important. Well, you, you succeed. Know, that, uh, let me just well, say, thank you. we, the, you've sent us uh, audio CDs before, and we've given them away to listeners. and we, Gettysburg. Uh, yeah, and more than that. One. And, th- and then we've given them also to some of the guys who work here, and, and they've come back with nothing but great things to say about them. So you're doing what you are saying you're trying to do, but you are actually doing it. I want to ask you this. The book that this comes from, um, obviously this, in order for it to be two and a half hours, you must have shortened it. How how hard was that to do? Well, you get that kind of conversation with people that, you know, read The Lord of the Rings and say, then they go in and, and they want to talk about Lord of the, the, the movie. And, you know, and everyone's mad. Well, you didn't tell this part of the story. You didn't tell that part of the story. And so, you know, henty files that really know the story sometimes say, you know, you didn't tell the whole story, and you, you can't tell the whole story in that time period. And 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 Larry, it is it is difficult to to chop things uh-huh, up a little uh-huh. bit, and um, that's just like anything in life. You got to make calls, and you got to say. Got but I mean, um, are you the, are you some the... things rise to the surface and say, you know, and I just have to say, if I want to inculcate this idea, this point, what do I think families need to hear? What do I think would be fun and exciting? That just makes it to the top of the list, and that's kind of what the, the, the direction that I use to. The, the formula that I used to keep okay, stuff in. Okay, so how does this story, how did this particular story get in your radar? And I mean, you were working on the other ones. Did you have this one in the back of your mind? Did somebody recommend it to you? Did you Were you f- already familiar with this book? Well, I, um, I'm, a, I'm a fan of King Alfred, and I think that probably, okay. uh, in many cases, the Henty books for me, since he's written a, over 120, it's what, what story can I get to? And so I do a little bit of prioritizing there. And, you know, with, with Alfred, you really don't have a lot. You don't have English civilization. You don't have Western culture without him. You're probably, I'll just give you a little bitty, tiny example of Alfred. And I, I promise not to, to go on and on about him. But, but probably you and the listeners right now, no matter where you are, you're inside a county, right? Right. You're in a county. I'm sitting here, and I'm in a county, Carroll County. And Unless you're in Louisiana, Illinois. then you're in a parish. That's right. <laughs> you, you could be in a parish, but, but it's the same thing. Okay. So, okay. so here's what happened. After, El- after Alfred sort of cleared out the Vikings, and after he sort of, I want to give away the story for people that don't know their history, but after Alfred sort of wins and gets England back, he says, you know what, I can't handle all of these cases, and government should be decentralized. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break this country up into little small things called shires, because if you commit a crime in a certain area, you're going to be tried by a jury of your peers in that area. And you get modern ideas of government from him. You don't have oh, counties really? or parishes without King Alfred. I didn't know he that. He set that up. He designed that. I wonder how many people but are it, with me on this one that they didn't know that. Yeah. Most of the way, and there's more. I mean, that's a small thing. But just think, that's implicit in our lifestyle, isn't it? We just assume yeah. that county governments exist. Well, this is, I use a big word here, but this is epistemologically self-conscious by Alfred. This is someone who knows the value of decentralizing power, 
right? Everyone talks about government's too big. Well, this guy knew that back in the ninth century. When he went to set up his kingdom after he had it all kind of it was in turmoil and chaos, he set it up that this way. That is interesting. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. I, I mean, and you could go on and on and on. He, he, he created the British Navy. On. I mean, there's so many things, like I said, you could have an Alfred seminar, and it would never get over. The Dragon and the Raven is the title of the uh, audio theater CD set that we are talking about. At the end of this, we're going to give at least one of them away. Uh, it looks like we've got more than one, so at least two of them away. Um, and we will continue with this conversation on the other side of the break. Bill Hyde is our guest. He's the producer of these. He's the founder of Heirloom Audio, and uh, there's, a, I think, a website associated with that. We'll find out when we come back. So we'll take a little break. Be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Some fog around Wednesday morning. Otherwise, intervals of clouds and sun and very warm and humid today. High 83 to 87. Partly cloudy, warm and muggy tonight. There may be some fog around late, though 67 to 71. For tomorrow, Christmas Eve, a very warm, humid day with some sunshine and a high of 82 to 86. And on Friday, Christmas Day, clouds and some sun with an afternoon shower. High 82 to 86. From the Florida Weather Center, meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, Matt Wilkerson here, your mobile Verizon rep. But not just here, I'll deliver the phone to you in your home. While I'm there, I'll only sell you what you need and I'll personalize it to you. Want to have me get you connected? Then call me at 352-528-0020. I even offer unlimited home phone service for just $20 per month. Just call me, your mobile Verizon rep, at 352-528-0020. Located next door to Silver Spring State Park and a few minutes from historic downtown Ocala, our award-winning Holiday Inn Express Hotel and Suites of Silver Springs is a place to stay for a friendly, memorable, and fun experience. Enjoy our fast and free Wi-Fi, complimentary hot breakfast, and free parking. Whether you're in town for work or play, our friendly staff will make you feel right at home. That's the Holiday Inn Express and Suites of Silver Springs. Proud sponsor of Friday Night Marion County High School Football on WOCA, The Source. Who doesn't love heading out on the boat with a family, hitting the ATV trails with friends, or blazing new stretches of highway with riding buddies? Your toys are your ticket to outdoor fun. At the McDonald Allstate Agency, we get to know you and help make sure you have all the right coverages. Plus, when you bundle your coverage for your car and your home with your boat, motorcycle, RV, or more, you can save up to 30%. So call the McDonald Allstate Agency today at 622-2333 or stop by one of our two Ocala locations at Cal Hills or the Jasmine Square Plaza. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. A Dane charged forward, a battle axe in his hand and determination in his eyes. This, the Henty stories, open up history. They make history colorful. Jay Henty knew how to tell a story. He knew how to spin a yarn, but he kept history baked inside it. It was Bill Hyde right there. I'm looking at like the trailer on the website. I guess I I neglected to take one of these, pull it out of the shrink wrap, and and play a sample on the air. So I apologize, but I've done that normally, but I just didn't do it today. Uh, The Dragon and the Raven is what we're talking about. It is an audio uh, production. It's two and a half hours long, and uh, on on the phone to talk about it is Bill Hyde, the producer of it and the uh, the founder of Heirloom Audio. So, Bill, I went to the website. I was just getting like a. I thought I was going to a trailer but i'm looking at like video of the actors and actresses um acting and and in Mm -hmm. like old time radio acting just not you know they're they're reading or reciting or something into the microphones can you do do the actors you know when you see an actor on a tv show like a talk show uh promoting a movie that they've been in they are very knowledgeable about the movie they they know the story behind it did did the people who acted in this play this audio play uh, become educated about this port part of history. You know, it's funny you say that. No one's ever asked me that before. And that is such a good question because in this case, I have the ability to say yes to that because, but I had two rare, there's two rare individuals that I really can call my friends and I really like. And, and that, that is Brian Blessed, who does the narration. Brian knows history. 
And then also one of his old friends and one of his acting buddies, they actually got started together. I reunited them in the studio for, for this, but they got their start years and years ago in I, Claudius, but I put them back together, and that's John Reese davies who's been in Lord of the, I mean, he's been, been in just uh, Indiana Jones, Lord of the Rings, a lot of these things. But those two guys especially really kind of got into this because they know their history and... Um, not many people do not even you know i would ask people in the tube in, in london as i was you know messing around what do you what do you know about king alfred you know one of these obnoxious americans that just actually says something to the guy that's <laughs> sitting next to them when he's on his when he's on the uh, on the train you know, on the subway and uh they, they have a thing where they know a little bit about when i mentioned earlier alfred went through this bad time you know and he he was you know drinking wine with and working for swine herds and you know there's these stories about him and the honey cakes in the wilderness and stuff they know a honey little cakes. bit of that folklore <laughs> what are a honey cakes well that's just you'll have to listen to the whole story to my old girlfriend give it used away to you but <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, huh? this is something that is at the bottom of his life, and he's in, in the world, here's a nobleman, and he's in the world of the average person, a swineherd and his wife. And so I had a girlfriend who called me that, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, he, and, and ordinary foods like, like honey cakes, you know, and he, he, he can't even get that right. And there's all kinds of things. Oh, there's, there's different versions of folklore there that are a lot of fun. Some of them know this in England, almost nobody in America, but some of them know it. But almost no one knows that they really are still living in Alfred's world, the world that he really created, drew up, and articulated. And I said, what makes it cool, it wasn't random. He did this self-consciously. You just, uh, by the way, at the beginning of the, the answer, you, you gave us a wonderful compliment about the two gentlemen, Brian Blessed and John Reese davies um, And the compliment to me uh, said that says to me that you invited them to be part of this not because of their names not because of their uh, their accomplishments and fame but rather because of who they are and what they brought to the table i, I love that that that's to me deeper than i usually hear a director talking about an actor in a movie i mean it's usually you know and and i love johnny depp and he's probably a smart guy but i think normally when johnny depp is invited it's because he's a very good actor mm -hmm. not to take away from the acting of anybody but it's not because they have knowledge of the subject if, is what i'm trying to say yeah yeah and, and where i'm going with that is that i think that the, the passion is is transferable so if you know about this history and you love the story then when you go get ready to do your part there's a kind of energy and chemistry that gets created in, this, in, in the in the studio. It, you can watch it and see it, you know, on, on the trailer that you're mentioning. But that's, you know, you t people talk about money. Like if if Donald Trump were you were to talk to him about what capital means, that he would say it would be dollar denominated. I am sure because he's a, a businessman in that sense, as I am, and so we deal in those terms. Capital, in the case of the stuff that I do with this Henty project, capital is passion, energy, chemistry wonder, those types of things. And that's like, those are like bank account items. If you can go tap into the reserves of people who have great reservoirs of these things, then you can make everyone's life a lot richer because you can do a lot better production. My son is 29 years old, so I don't take road trips with him anymore. <laughs> but, but when he was younger, when he was a little boy, we took a lot of long road trips. And we would get, back in those days, cassettes. And the cassettes would sometimes be audio uh, books. You know, they wouldn't be two and a half hours long, I don't think, but they'd be short little audio books. And I can remember that that uh, it's different than sitting in the theater or sitting at home watching TV. It's different because you're sitting and I'm driving, he's listening, we're both listening, we're not talking a whole lot, but, but then when it's all done, you start to talk about this story that you just heard and, mm -hmm. and, and, you, st and you realize that that you basically have read a book. You don't realize yeah. you're reading a book, but you re you read a book and you can see it only in mind's eye. You know, so so when the, when is it, when is a if it's two guys, he was a young guy, I was an old guy. So if there was a beautiful woman <laughs> in my mind's eye, she was beautiful from from my standards. I'm sure he was picturing the little girl in eighth grade. You know. <laughs> You bet. You, no, no, no. That's true. That's yeah, really true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you also do something wonderful with your projects. Is that you have you you have this bond form between the generations. You have um, parents and children involved in uh, reading the uh, different plays that you have, and that's pretty amazing to me. 
Oh yeah, we love to uh, we love the cross generational stuff, and I mean that really is my you know it, it, what's my deepest darkest secret. I, I'd like to produce something that transcends my own life and goes on and can be a blessing and can be fun and exciting for people beyond you know my time, and that can be people of all ages. But kids really need to you know Larry was talking a little bit about just how. Uh, what what's necessary i think part of how we're robbing our children of their their childhood in some sense neil postman wrote a book about this is we're we're forcing them into these visually uh pre-established visions this 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 culture where here's what it is already and so what happens is they 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 just these items are frozen their their heads and their imaginations are stunted if you go through childhood and you still have wonder because those stories are imagined by, by you, then that, that culture that, that does that develops a different type of citizen, a different type of, of person that lives in that culture. And so I, feel, I personally feel kids need to read books and listen to stories like these so that they can invent their own idea of what's happening that's like actually a little bit like lifting weights for the mind and if you've ever talked to a kid that watches tv all day long over against a kid that reads books and listens all day long it's a totally different conversation we all know it some of us are afraid to say it because it's not politically correct either but we yeah, all yeah. know it. And what we need to do, guys, I think where our culture's definitely, we've, we've let our youth down, is we need to build listeners. The other thing that, I've, that I want this project to be about is building listeners. If you ever talk to somebody that can't hear you, a young person, they just, because they've been so visually inculcated, they, they just don't have the ability to listen. Wow, what that's happens a, when, you give, that's, when you give someone, a child, one of these, and they actually, you get them trained. They won't like it at the beginning because they'll find it the same way right. your muscles would find lifting weights. Right, right, they won't right. like it. That's a but good it analogy. it doesn't mean that they can't do it. Yeah. You just have to stick with it, and they will stick with it with them and listen to it with them. The, uh, and eventually, they'll they'll find the world imaginative and wonderful and charming and not so crass and prefixed by by people that it just, here's here's what your image is and you're stuck with it. For those who didn't hear earlier or, or didn't pick up on it, um, the, the work that Bill Hyde does is um, s- safe for children, I guess is the best way to mm-hmm. say this. It's not made for children, but it's safe for children. It's, uh, it says age of six through adult. There's nothing in here that you're going to say, oh my gosh, I didn't know that was in there. I mean, you, may, you take great pains to make sure that the, the story is told accurately without in, uh, offending anybody. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you said something earlier about a woman. Um, let's take that same idea of the imagination and put that into a battlefield context. Let's say Alfred gets into a sword fight. You guys, you're going to have one vision because you've seen Save it, Pri- Saving Private Ryan or some Braveheart or some movie. We know that there's some carnage that exists in a battlefield. Right. You're going to imagine some of that when you watch, when, when, as your brain begins to develop the implications of listening to this, and, and, and you wa- begin to watch this movie in your mind. Your kids, however haven't been so inundated with visual images of bloody carnage. And so they're, they're, mm-hmm. the reason it's safe and fun is they're going to listen to this and it's, their brain just isn't going to take it there. It's going to take it to wherever they're at in life. They're going to hear some sharp, sharp swords clanging together and maybe an hour or something like that. Let me, but that's what makes it kind of safe, I, I think. I, on the back of the CD, I want to read something that it says for the listeners so that they know about this. It's called The Dragon and the Raven, The Extraordinary Adventures of G.A. Henty. And the one line that I think I want to read to you, we already heard that King Alfred is this, is how, what this is about. Alfred and Edmund... Realize the nation's only hope is to turn back to the god they have abandoned. Can the two young warriors turn the tide of the war and save their world? That's an important sentence, or two sentences, for our yeah. listeners to know. I have two of them, Robin. Two yes. or three? Three? Yep. Three? Yep. Right? Do we save one for me? One, one there? Yeah, I want one. I'm going to keep okay. one. Okay, so we have three. All right, mm-hmm. we have four, actually, but I'm going to keep one. Um, 
We gave call, one to Galen. Call seven, uh, 622-9622. We'll put your name on it. we got three of them, so we can give three of them away. Uh, these are these are wonderful. Uh, two and a half hours worth of nonstop adventure is what it says on the back. The Dragon and the Raven. Now, for the rest who don't win them, uh, we need to know how to buy them. And real quickly, if we got like 40 seconds, Bill, if you could give us that information. Sure. Go to thedragonandtheraven.com. Thedragonandtheraven.com. Dot com and you can watch a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. You can hear a little bit of it and just to get a feel for for what we've got going. Right, I can give away one on there. The other two I'll have to do off there. Good morning. You're the first one. Who's this? This is Susan. Susan, do you know where we are? Yes, sir, I do. Tell me the first initial of your last name, Susan. M. M. Okay, Susan M. You've got one waiting for you. Okay. Thank you so much. We've got two more, and we'll do that off the air, but I've got to say goodbye to Bill. Bill, thank you so much. You are awesome. Have a great Christmas. Thank you so much, guys. Merry Christmas. Thank you. We'll be right back. Fox News Ready to Go. I'm Pam Puso. It's a holiday tradition, last-minute shopping. I would say it gets crazier every single year. Later, at Minnesota's Mall of America, shoppers could collide with protesters with the Black Lives Matter movement. The mall tried getting a court order to halt the protest on what is the busiest days for malls. The judge only banned three individuals organizing the event. Fox's Eben Brown. A new poll keeps Donald Trump's frontrunner status firmly intact. Trump's at 39% in a new national CNN ORC survey. Ted Cruz is a distant second with 18%. Fox's Rachel Sutherland, Republicans Marco Rubio and Ben Carson are tied for third place. For three days, he survived by eating seeds and fruit. The 19-year-old man found alive three days after a landslide in southern China. More than 70 people are missing. Fox News, we report, you decide. Men, if you're like me,